San Diego, we made it to July. It's peak, what, selling season, right? Summer, all that jazz. Three numbers in real estate that you are not going to want to miss. Closings, prices, and inventory, which is the one that's going to stand out above all the rest. Yeah, and also... For those who are having a hard time qualifying, we're starting to see a lot of programs open up. So I want to talk about that too. So this is one of those moments where it's like, we saw it coming. We said it was going to happen. We felt it. We, you know, we like signs and then, but like the data wasn't really showing it yet. Right. So there was like this little bit of this like purgatory gang. Guess what? The data has finally caught up. So here's the story. As we sit here, summer, middle of the year, 2024. Closings down. It's only 2.5%, but the truth is in different pockets Mm -hmm. around the county, we're seeing this like completely exploded where it's like 30, 40, 50% down from normal sales in the peak selling seasons of the year. Right. So the county's kind of absorbing that little bit, but it's a very interesting metric juxtaposed from the fact that prices are up 9.1%. Crazy. So it's like, where's the give going to be? But gang, here's the number though that's standing out like a sore thumb. Inventory up 41%. So, you know, you think about it here, like a wave, right? Right. So the wave is coming of inventory. And what's that going to mean for timing? We're still in a very seller-sided market. As a matter of fact, our market action index is still 57, but it's down from 60. Mm-hmm. It's starting to slide now toward the buyer side. Yeah. So what are the indications of that for you on either side of that fence? And a couple of reasons why inventory can grow, right? You either have more people putting their homes on the market or homes aren't selling. Mm. And we can kind of see that in the data there. Yeah. So the other thing I want to talk about is new loan programs. Mm. So a lot of folks will call and say that they're having trouble getting financing at traditional banks. So, oh, I couldn't qualify for the home that I wanted. Well, if you're self-employed, you have non-traditional income, there's a ton of products coming out right now that are really flexible in terms of what they, sometimes you don't need tax returns. Sometimes you don't even need bank statements. Lots of opportunity out there for you. If you've been having trouble getting qualified for the home you want, it's probably worth an exploration again. And th- those aren't the liar loans that right. blew up the market like a decade or two ago. These are like people that make legit money, but it's just the way that they get paid. I mean, how many people in San Diego County are self-employed? Yeah. Right? So right. just a little bit outside the box, but enables you to not get like pulled across the coals on rate and program options exactly. and stuff. Exactly. And not so far off of traditional costs for rate either. So really competitive stuff that's just more flexible, allows you to get in right now, maybe while things are a little bit unique. That's it.